Hey, in this tutorial, I'll show you how you can easily create actions in Photoshop. So basically, actions are more like shortcuts that give us a step ahead within the retouching process. And for this tutorial, we're going to be learning about how to create frequency separation actions. I know there are a couple of actions available for you to download online, but if I told you want to create them yourself, or if I told you sit on a computer that doesn't have any actions on it, I just want you to learn how to create the actions by yourself. So in this case, we're just going to be learning about how to create frequency separation actions and also how we can create actions for the dodging and burning in order to speed up the retouching process. Remember, you don't have to go on creating those layers and making those adjustments yourself. It is going to be by simply playing and running that action and you're just going to start retouching right away. And I want to show you guys how you can do this in Photoshop. And if at all you haven't hit the like button on this video, Make it a point that you hit the like button on this video so that YouTube can push it and recommend it to more people out there. So right now we are in Photoshop and before we can create the action, make sure the action window is open or activated in your Photoshop. And in order to do that, just come right here to window, then come and make sure actions is selected. So you have your action window open right here. And before you can create your action, what we are going to do you're going to come right here to this folder icon and click on it. So just want to record the actions and we place them into a folder so that you can easily find them or locate them within the actions window. So I'm just going to come right here and I'm going to uh, name this to a frequency tutorial. I'm just going to name my folder to frequency tutorial. You can name it whatever you want. If at all, you can easily find it in that way. I'm just going to come and hit OK. So after doing that and, make, and making sure that this folder is selected, we can now go ahead and record the action. Remember, you're going to be recording the action and later play it on the photo to see if at all it is working quite well or easily for our different kind of images. And for this case, I'm just going to be creating an 8-bit frequency separation action. So I'm just going to come right here and I'm going to click on this create new action option right here. And when you click on it, you can see that we have the name. And for this case, I'm just going to name this frequency 8 bit. So this is going to be for an 8 bit image. You can see the bit depth of your image right here. So the set is that folder that we just created at the start of this tutorial. You can as well assign a function key for your action depending on how all the shortcuts you can use for the keyboard. For, but for this case, I don't want to assign any key. So you can assign a key if at all you wish to. Maybe when you press F1, Shift and Command, it is automatically going to play this action. But for this case, I'm just going to leave it at none because I prefer to do everything manually. So you can as well come and assign a color for your action, if at all you wish to. Maybe red can do. And after doing that, come and click on record right here. And it's going to start recording your action. You can see the record option is now activated and this is going to be turning into red in color. So just want to create those actions, all the different layers for frequency separation. And usually for frequency separation, we have two layers and we're just going to create those two layers by hitting Ctrl Command J twice. And usually this is going to be our low, I'm just going to use my caps lock key, low frequency. And this is going to be, just double click on that layer and this is going to be our high frequency, just like that. But as you can see, everything is being recorded as we are creating those layers. So what I'm going to do I'm going to come to the low frequency layer and now deactivate the high frequency layer. Remember on this layer, that is where we determine the amount of textures we need in a given image. And in order to do that, we're going to come right here to filter and come to blur and come down to Gaussian blur. So you can put any radius that you want, but this is not going to matter for this action. But remember when your action is playing, this is the point when you blur out the prominent details so that the details that you lose out on this step is going to be the detail that you're going to be remaining with in the final image so i'm just going to leave it at any you can put it at any radius that you want 
because the action is going to be set in a way that it's going to stop at this very point so that you can adjust these settings for different kinds of images remember different images may be having different resolutions and different details or different cameras capture different information and they have different megapixels and sensors so the amount of detail that may be captured in different images may differ from one image or the cameras can capture different information depending on the amount of sensor or the amount of megapixels they have so i'm just going to come and hit ok and you can see at this point of the gaussian blur this is the gaussian blur step so just want the action to stop at this point so that we can put a different radius for the gaussian blur of different kinds of images so what we have to do we want to make sure this action stops at this point and it pauses for this first step and in order to do that just come right here you can see this option next to the gaussian blur so just come and make sure you click on that option and when you click on it it means that this action is going to stop at that point so that you can uh, feed in your gaussian blur radius details and after doing that we're going to come back to the high frequency layer and select it and come and activate it and since this is an 8-bit image we're going to come to image and come all the way down to apply image and usually for a settings of an 8-bit image, come and make sure to select the layer from which we are subtracting our textures, which is the low frequency layer. And the blending mode or the channel has to be RGB. Invert, make sure the invert option is not checked. And blending has to be subtract. Opacity at 100, preserve transparency and mask are not checked. The scale has to be 2 and offset 128. Make sure the preview is on and you can see a textures. On this gray kind of layer but if at all you're working with a 16-bit image come and make sure the blending is add opacity at 100 preserve transparency and mask are not checked the scale is 2 and offset 0 and this time around make sure the invert option is checked and you'll have the same results but if at all i'm dealing with an 8-bit image for this case inverter has to be checked off or you shouldn't check this option and the blending has to be subtract or pass at 100 preserve transparency and mask cannot check the scale is 2 and offset 128 make sure invert is not checked and simply hit ok so come to the blending mode and change it from normal and scroll all the way down to linear light and you'll get back the image the way it was meant to look so we're going to put these two in in, in a group and before you can do that we just want to create a check layer that is going to be enabling us to see the uneven skin tone transitions and in order to do that just come to the adjustments and come to black and white so usually skin tone is usually in the reds and yellows so just come left click and drag to the left hand side to darken the reds and you can play around with the yellows and in this case you can see the unevenness in the skin tones of your different images and just close this so just one put everything in a group by holding down control or command or you can use shift and make sure the topmost layer is selected and left click on the bottom most layer and drag this into this folder just like that so you can double click to rename this to frequency 8 bit just like that and hit enter but usually when the action is playing we just want it automatically select the layer that you are going to be blending or evening the skin tones at so you're going to open this group by clicking on this drop down icon and come and select the low frequency layer make sure it is selected and after doing that uh, we have to come back to the actions and make sure that we stop the action from playing by clicking on this stop icon right here so when you click on it the action is going to stop being recorded and you can see that everything that we did the image has been recorded right here so i'm just going to close this by toggling this drop down icon and minimize all that so i just want to come and delete this to see if at all we have successfully created our frequency separation action so in order to play it just come right here and click on frequency 8 bit remember that is what we named our action and when you click on it just come display icon and you can play it and if at all you created a shortcut for your action you can use the keyboard shortcuts for that action so i'm just going to come and hit play 
and remember the action is going to stop at this point when you where you have to feed in the details for the Gaussian blur radius so you can play around with these options and hit OK and the action is going to continue playing and stop at that point when by we selected the low frequency layer and you can just come and select uh, the mixer brush tool and you start evening out or blending the transitions within the skin color or skin tones so that is how to record your frequency separation action and if at all you want to record your dodge and burn action remember dodging and burning is more of enhancing the highlights and the shadows of a given image so you can use the same technique to do your layers for the macro or micro dodge and burn and if at all you want to use them for the micro dodge and burn you just come right here and if at all you just want to create your action for the macro or micro dodge and burn just come to create new action and it's going to be saved in our folder that we created first and you can name this to micro db or micro dodge and burn and create a function you can choose the color that you want and simply hit record so for micro dodge and burn usually we just want to enhance the highlights and the shadows so just come to the curves adjustment layer click on it and first of all slightly brighten this is our dodge layer so you just slightly brighten just like that click in the middle and drag up to brighten slightly and close that make sure this white layer mask is selected hit ctrl command i on the keyboard to invert this is going to be our dodge layer and you're going to do the same for the band come back to the curves click in the middle and darken slightly make sure the white layer mask is selected and hit ctrl command i on the keyboard to invert that and you're going to name this to burn so after doing that we just want to create a check layer that is going to enable us to see everything quite well and in order to do that we're just going to come down here to our levels just right here and when you come to levels you can see that this creates you can create like a very a slightly dark image just like that but remember we just want to create check layers for this particular case and in order to do that just close this and you can come back right here and we create an inverted kind of a layer for our image so after creating that levels just come here to your gradients so you select the burn layer and come to the gradient map right here and after doing that you can see that this looks inverted but if at all yours is not inverted you can come right here and click right here and come to the basics and look for uh, foreground to background or you can use uh, whichever you want or black and white whichever matters and hit ok so if at all you ju yours is not inverted you can use the reverse option to revert or invert this so this is going to be like an inverted check layer for you and just close this and if at all you want to play around with the levels you can just come and click on this level icon double click and you can slightly darken to see the imperfections within the skin tones so this is going to be for our check layers and this is going to be for the dodge and burn so what i'm going to do i'm going to put these two in a group for the check layers by dragging them in this folder right here and i'm going to name this to db check so this is going to be for our check layers and this is going to be for the macro or micro dodge and burn so i'm just going to put these two in a group again so deselect the topmost layer and put them in a group and this is going to be for our d and b which is for the dodge and burn so i'm going to put both in a group again so select both by holding down control and dragging them in a group and i'm going to name my group to dodge i'm going to name it to dodge and burn just like that dodge dodge and burn just like that and i'm going to stop recording my action and before i can even stop i have to make sure that i have opened these layers so that every single time we play this action all these have been opened up for us so i'm just going to select the dodge layer mask so that we just stop we start at that point when 
this is selected so just come the actions and simply stop recording the action and that is going to be saved for us automatically so what i want to do i'm just going to come right here and i'm going to delete this like that and this is my micro dodge and burn action so i just want to come and see if at all it has successfully recorded so select the action for micro dodge and burn and simply play it and you can see it has automatically created everything for us inclusive of the check layers within uh, this folder so this is how to create your actions for micro dodge and burn and frequency passion and if at all you have loved this don't forget to give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and haven't subscribed this channel ronix from ronix photography thanks for watching i'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating